One of the things that I love to ask on these podcasts is your opinion on the importance of content for the entire sales and marketing process, where on a scale of one to 10, if one was not important at all to the success of the company, 10 being vital, content being vital to the success of the company, where would you put content marketing on that spectrum? 12. 12. Okay. We broke that, a, was that an option? <laughs> <laughs> a high 10. A high 10, Steve. But for a lot of reasons that I can tell you, I can tell you why if you want to know why. All right. I, but that's the next, but we got the scale. You, you blew the scale open. Why? Please let us know. Okay, so okay, so I have this conversation all the time about content and about you know the time and effort involved and, and what do we do? And you have two schools of thought. You have, you know, that that founder CEO who's a tech head and wants to talk nonstop about the features and functions and why you know your widget is better than everybody else's widget. You've got the engineers who want to do the exact same thing. Um, and then you've got the actual users who are trying to solve pains and they don't necessarily care about the features and functions. They want to know, does it solve a pain? And so you have this back and forth frustration. So there's a couple of things and why it's a 12 on a scale of 10. Uh, one is you need to recognize that despite what you might think, there are more people in the buying committee today than there ever has been in history. So you need to make content that services every person in that buying committee. So you need yeah. Like I said, in my case, I would sell to a, a, a social media technician who probably can't even spell KPI, and I'm being tongue in cheek, but I'm not that far off, to a CMO who's worried about budget and ROI, to a rep ops person who's wondering about, does it integrate with my stack and can I report on this easily to prove myself worth and embed some workflows and some processes? And does it have single sign on as an example? So there's all these people in your buying committee, you need to make content for, and they're going to advocate for you, or they're going to shoot you down and advocate, advocate for another alternative provider based on whether they find the answer to the pain they're experiencing in your solution. And the only way they're going to find that because they have the attention span of a gnat is in your content. They're not going to download the product nine times out of 10 and play with it unless you're literally at the bottom of the funnel and they finally have to do due diligence right. and it's a short list of two or three vendors max. So that's also how they find you. Content is SEO. Said another way, it's SEO. So yes, I'm appealing to these buyer personas, but you know what is your number one and number two and number three driver of traffic to your website? I will contend it's going to be probably this order, but I could be wrong, but I'll be, it's going to be a variation. Number one driver of traffic to your website will be direct traffic. They heard about you somewhere and they're going there. Number two driver of traffic to your website will be organic. They searched. Number, and that's going to be like through the charts, one and two. Like they're going to be neck and neck more than likely. And then number three, usually at this point, you're dropping off 50%. It will be something, depending on your budgets, it will be something like you know, paid, paid ads, pay per click, et cetera. And then it's just, you know, random. So in my example, I just gave number two was organic. So you need the content to get indexed, to get found by each individual persona, because you don't know who's sponsoring you into the deal. Is it the RevOps person bringing you into the deal? Is it the user bringing you into the deal? Is it the CMO bringing you into the deal? Who's hooking you? So you have to have content for all of them. Number two, you need great content that's compelling, that's published frequently, so you rank high in the search engine results. If you're not doing that on a regular basis, if you're not optimizing your content for SEO to get found, you're never going to rank. You're never going to get that organic traffic. Number three, they're going to share the content. It could be an actual handoff. Hey, check out this PDF. Or it's going to more than likely be a verbal. I just read something the other day from Agora Pulse. You should check them out. I think they can solve your problem, which goes to my number one input, direct traffic. How did the direct traffic got there? Probably word of mouth, which probably came from a piece of content. Now, when I say content, most people think of content as being written. It could be an ebook. More than likely, it's a blog. 
The reality today is that most content is not that. That's middle of funnel or further down. Most content that's getting you the inbound traffic is coming from a podcast, a webinar, social media, a live stream. So think about Twitter. It began life at what, 140 characters? It was a micro blog when it began. It's no different. I could go to Twitter. I go to Instagram. I could go to LinkedIn. It doesn't matter. I'm having micro content. So I can have content on social media. For example, when I make a lot of content that's inspired by my blogs and I'll pull one or two items out of the blog and I'll riff about it and then I'll link to the blog. So they may never read the blog or I could send a lot of people to the blog. But meanwhile, I still got compelling content that's getting found because it's indexed and it's on LinkedIn and it's everywhere else. There we go. Um, YouTube, another you know, video through the roof, different kinds of content. So content is massive. It looks at where you are in the funnel. Top of funnel is where most people get stuck. They feel like there's too much noise. The reality is, I will tell you this. Ah, you need creators. I call them corporate creators. You can call them influencers. You need, because people buy from people. They don't buy from companies, right? Uh, I would buy from Steve. I wouldn't buy from his company because I like Steve. I don't even know what his company's called. Who the hell knows? Content strategies. I don't know that. So, you know, if I see Steve's content, I'm like, I like him. I can see him. I trust him. And that's how it all begins. So content is number one by far. Best of all, when you make killer content in a classic, you know, uh, hub and spoke model, this is so scalable. And for you CMOs, so freaking cheap and affordable. I can go to a webinar. I can get two or three panelists on there that have amazing brand reach. I can have them on a webinar for 45 minutes to an hour or a podcast or a live stream. I transcribe it. I give it to a writer on Fiverr who I vet it and I like, and they get me, right? They take the transcription, not the video. They take the transcription. They turn it into blog. They turn it into social media posts. They turn it into case studies. They turn it into eBooks. And get, what did that cost me to produce? Yeah. Nothing other than my time, right? The last thing is the content needs to speak the pain, which is how we began. The features are irrelevant. The features happen at the demo stage. Do you have this problem? I do have that problem. Great. Let me hook you up with my sales rep who will actually do the mouse clicks and show you how it works. I can make that problem go away. So too many people focus content on solely their product. Stop pitch, uh, pitch slapping us and speak to your persona of your ICPs. In other words, when I'm selling social media, I'm having conversations like this around what is the CMO doing and what's the budget and how do you have success? You're going to say to me, well, that has nothing to do with social media. My point is I'm not at the social media. Right now, I'm just establishing credibility. This is something that a lot of people are, are looking for. I know when Steve made this ebook that he researched it. I know he's got to optimize. I know it's going to get found. When they look it up, they're probably going to find this episode. They're going to find me. They're going to hear me. They're going to say he's credible. Hey, he competes with Who's Sweet and Sprout Social. I think our Sprout Social subscription is coming up. I heard them bitching the other day about certain features and how expensive it is. Let's get Daryl involved here because I kind of liked him and he sounded kind of credible and maybe they've got a better solution. And then I'm a hero because I saved this money and it's a shitty economy. So this is good news for everybody. That's how content works. That's why it's a 12 out of 10.